Every year, HEC Data Day is a very special day on campus, as it gathers researchers, students, and companies applying data science techniques to improve business and society. We have HEC professors showcasing their latest research with data science applications to problems in finance, marketing, strategy, information systems, law. We also have students presenting their data challenges conducted in partnership with companies. This year we had Natixis and uh, Antin investment partners. We also have startups uh, pitching their business ideas related to data. This year we had uh, Justice.co and uh, Data Solus. We have large companies also uh, presenting uh, concrete cases, use cases, uh, explaining us how they can extract value from their data. We had Atos, Michelin, Ellen and Overy, and GS1. Data is not only important to us marketing researchers, but also to uh, marketing practice. Historically, marketing has been marginalized, and today with data, we can uh, communicate with our eyes. So this helps the CMOs, and for us marketing researchers, attribution is key, because we want to associate an expense with return. So for example, in my case, influencer marketing, I'm uh, exploring and trying to understand the value of influencers. So if I have an endorsement, what is the dollar value of that endorsement? And for example, with Instagram stories, the swipe ups, we can now associate an endorsement with, for example, a purchase in an e-commerce uh, platform. We study data that comes from the big tech firm Alibaba. And the questions we try to explore are what are the fundamental drivers of firm growth? Uh, what explains why some firms survive and others die? And going deeper, we ask what are the investments that firms need to make to stay in the market? And we, in particular, focus on the role of advertisement. So we want to know whether firms that get funding for advertisement then uh, build customer capital in terms of customer loyalty or the visibility of their products among customers. And then at the end, we see how this translates into the survival of firms. So sound uh, policy making requires to leverage data and, uh, and research uh, to enlighten uh, the decisions of the government, uh, parliament, etc. But France is lagging relative to peer countries. And so in very recent years, in, in the past two years, there's been great effort in the French parliament to leverage new data and to get closer to academia in order to, uh, well, to be able to form better uh, policy decisions. In particular, uh, we have developed uh, an app, which is called Lex Impact, which allows members of parliament to actually uh, simulate the effect of an amendment that they would like to propose to the budget law in order to see how much it would cost for public finances and what effects it would have on inequality. And so this is the first time uh, that uh, parliament now has uh, a tool that uh, allows members of parliament to make better uh, policy decisions. So just a, a short reminder about what, what is GS1. So GS1 is a global organization uh, that has been created 45 years ago uh, by a pool of retailers and manufacturers to try to identify products and locations and many other things the same way uh, to foster interoperability. This is really important. And, and the role of GS1 was more or less to provide these numbers. And this last years, with the, 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 the new, let's say, businesses due to digital, to data and so on, the role of GS1 has changed and we have uh, widened the scope, widened the number of users of our system. So we need to change, uh, let's, let's say, just providing numbers and a place for collaboration to a little bit more than that and provide a real customer journey to, uh, to a, a very large uh, scope of stakeholders that can use our standards in a plug-and-play vision. That's why we have opened uh, 
this uh, this chair at, at uh, HOC with the uh, the digital content for Omni Channel because this is really what is at stake and it moves GS1 from standards to services more and more. Exactly, and actually this is uh, not really an easy journey moving from uh, standards to services. So how this can be done? What are the challenges being faced? This is precisely what we are trying to work out as a research agenda with GS1 trying to identify the challenges and also possible solutions that will create value for you know, all the stakeholders, the customers and society at large. opens us its data for a set period of time, so two weeks usually, and then different student groups will kind of compete in solving a business problem. So our client was uh, Natixis uh, Inter Epargne. So what the bank offers uh, is uh, retirement plans uh, for employees. Uh, we had access to five years of data for every single transaction. Our purpose of uh, the analysis was to understand the different type of uh, saver profiles and, uh, and understand also whether they would do a withdrawal on their account or not. So we basically did two kinds of model, two kinds of uh, algorithms for this. The first one was uh, clustering algorithms. Basically the idea is to um, divide uh, the, the savers base, the client base of Natlexis into uh, several different groups that have different behaviors and that might be treated different by the bank. Uh, and we ended up on four. Um, and uh, the second uh, analysis uh, was uh, to predict whether uh, a special uh, saver would do a withdrawal or not. And we achieved 91% uh, accuracy. Uh, so in 91% of the cases, we could predict whether or not a saver would do a special, uh, would do a withdrawal.